guys, it's Michael and welcome to video three of the tips and tricks for building remote control hot air balloon envelope series. Today's a big day. I think it's one you guys have really been waiting for. We're going to start sewing. So today we'll kind of go over everything you need to have ready to go before you start your sewing process, <clears throat> as well as a few tips and tricks for getting started. So we have all of our Nomex panels cut. I don't label Nomex panels because there's only one of them. Um, and so here's our Nomex. Uh, we also have all of our individual panels rolled up and organized. Uh, they're also labeled uh, on the top and the bottom of the panel on the coated side. So we'll start, uh, we'll get some close ups of some of that labeling, what it looks like, how I do it. Um, we have all of our colors laid out. Like I talked about earlier, uh, I'm going to be sewing an 8-gore bulbous envelope in this video, 3,500 cubic foot. Uh, this is one I'm just currently putting together for someone in the club. Uh, so some of the panels will look a little bit different than that Z-series that you guys might be working on from the camera website, but the process is exactly the same, right? The type of seams you're going to be doing, the finishing work, all that. So we're going to go through it. Uh, going to get you guys some close-ups of the walking foot in action here. We'll get that hooked up to the sewing machine. I'll let you guys know on what seams I use this for. It's pretty much every seam except my finishing zigzag seams and if I'm sewing Velcro uh, or webbing on. So you'll want this on for 99% of the time you're sewing. Uh, one of the big things you want to have ready, and I also use this when I cut and I haven't gone through it yet, this is a gore layout. So this is something you can make in Microsoft Excel. It should be a grid. You can see I have check marks on all these panels. That's just sewing, or showing and verifying that I cut all those panels. I have them rolled up and ready to go. So I've verified that I have every single panel cut. Um, even on this balloon design, uh, there's well over, I wanna say 160 panels on this one. So you need to be prepared, right? You need to be, uh, organized on what you're doing on the Cameron pattern, there's even more. I think there's upwards of 375 or more panels uh, in that design. So be organized, take your time, make sure you have everything cut, then you can get started sewing. As I sew these gores together, I'm gonna sew gore one, then I'm gonna sew gore two, gore three. I'll roll each individual gore up, label it, gore one, gore two, gore three, similar to this, I'll roll it up and I'll tie a, tie a thing around it, mark the gore number. And as I go, I will check off each individual panel as I sew the gore, okay? And then once we have all our gores sewn, we'll have a pile of eight gores for this design, 24 gores if you're doing the Cameron Z-series uh, pattern. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna sew these vertical seams together. And as we sew the gores together, we're gonna draw a line all the way up the gore to remind us um, which gores we've sewn together. Additionally, on this pattern, you're gonna mark where you want your pulley to be for your Velcro top. Um, so we'll, we'll have to do a video in the future kind of how to do the Velcro top setup. But at this point, you're basically just gonna wanna have a pulley inside of the balloon uh, on one side if you're doing a pull out velcro top so you'll have a rip out line that goes to the pulley inside of the balloon and then back up to the opposite side of the top and as you pull on that line it's going to pull down and peel the velcro back across so you'll see me install the pulley i like to mark where i'm going to put my pulley on this grid as well so i don't forget as i'm sewing the balloon together oh i'm on the gore where i need to add the pulley Okay guys, so a couple things before we get started. As you can see in this video here, I have my walking foot installed. I've got my thread uh, through the needle. I have a nice purple thread for this balloon to match. Uh, in here too, you can also see the uh, bottom drive dogs on the stage of the machine in steel, those teeth. And then you can also see the uh, kind of clear plastic drive dogs on the walking foot. So that's what I mean when you're gonna have drive dogs on both sides of the ripstop nylon, helping that material stay even, super helpful. The other thing is that uh, I have a 9014 needle. I'm not really up to date on needle sizes and how they work. I know 
uh, it goes like 9014 and then 116. And I believe the one below the 9014 is like an 80 something. Um, none of that really matters, uh, except that the 9014 is the needle size that I found best for sewing together ripstop nylon. It makes a big enough hole in the material that the thread pulls through easily and you don't get skipping, but at the same time, it's not uh, too big of a hole to where you end up uh, with kind of, you know, uh, too much uh, of lost material in your ripstop. Uh, for the finishing work I do when I'm sewing Velcro to the ripstop or I'm hemming over uh, Nomex, I found that the 116 needle is the better size to use. As when you double up material or you're trying to punch through Velcro, you need a slightly bigger hole to help that thread thread through. So 9014 needles, what we're gonna be starting with here to sew all of our panels and gores together. Lastly, if you choose to use the Singer Heavy Duty uh, sewing machine like I have here, the 4411, I have my stitch length all the way at four. We're doing a simple straight stitch. Uh, the other thing I found with this walking foot is if I put the needle position in the far right position like that, which equates to that needle position, it's a little hard to see there, and I keep my material lined up with the right side of my walking foot. So I have my material here laid on top of each other and I line up an edge here. I get a nice 5 16 uh, seam allowance. So okay guys, so I want to show you a little bit about how we prepare to sew two panels together, okay? So I've already sewn panel A right here to my Nomex. So now I'm going to sew panel B, the next one in the gore pattern to panel A. So here's what's important about labeling your panels, okay? So panel A right now is non-coating side up. This is the slippery, shiny, shiny side of your material, okay? Panel B is coating side up. So that means I have the two uncoated sides of the material, you can see this side shinier, shinier, pushed together. Now, the reason I like to label on the coated side is because right here, it's backwards. You can say, you can see this is BB for panel B bottom. Now this panel says AT for panel A top. So I'm sewing the top of panel A to the bottom of panel B. I'm gonna line up these panels like this, remember with your outside uncoated part of the material, sandwiched together with your label on the outside on the top panel and your label on the outside on the bottom panel. And I'm gonna sew these together. So I'm gonna get this set up in the machine right now and then I'll kind of show you how we start that process. All right guys, so here we are with panel A, the purple panel on the bottom, panel B on the top. Remember the two uncoated sides of the material. This is uncoated, this is uncoated, are face to face together. That's why we call it a face to face straight seam. We're all set up in the machine and we're gonna go ahead and sew these together. I don't have an extra hand, so I'm not gonna be able to show you the sewing process in this film, but I will get someone else in here to film me sewing to show kind of how it looks together. We have the edge of our panels lined up with that walking foot uh, with the needle in the far left position off center. And we're gonna get a nice 5 16 inch uh, seam allowance right in there as we sew this together so we're ready to go okay guys so when we start sewing these seams together we're gonna sew just about a quarter inch forward and then we're gonna do a little back stitch to lock it in so here we go a few stitches forward back stitch okay so we did a few stitches forward and then we did a back stitch Okay, now here we go forward again. You can see that walking foot 
keeping that material lined up. Once I get enough material through to grab it on the other side, I'll do so and just kind of help the material feed through. Making sure that we're keeping the material nice and even, top and bottom. That's all there is to it. Okay guys, so here's our finished seam between panels A and B. You can see at the end here, got a nice little back stitch there to lock it in. You can see our BB label. On the other side here, we're gonna have our AT label. And when we open this up, we're gonna have our nice uncoated sides of the material with a nice hidden seam ready to go. So we're gonna do this for the entire gore, get it all sewn together here, get all our gore sewn together, one through eight for this design, and uh, we'll start sewing them together to make a balloon. Okay, so once you have all of your panels sewn into gores, it's time to sew your gores together into a balloon. So what I have here is the beginning of two separate gores, and these are the outside pieces of material on both sides. So I'm gonna set the two outside pieces of the material together, face to face, that's why we call it a face to face seam. I'm gonna line up my end and bring it into the sewing machine, and we're gonna be sewing this gore all the way up the length of the balloon. Take your time. As you go up these gores, you're going to hit your horizontal panel seams and you want to make sure that when you sew those together, those are well aligned. You can adjust slightly with pressure on the top and bottom of the material to keep the gores aligned as you sew them together. Okay guys, so once you have all those gore seams sewn together, you'll have a large pile of fabric, which is your almost finished balloon. However, it is inside out. So what you'll want to do is take it into a large room or outside on a large tarp and slowly and carefully pull the balloon inside out so your shiny uh, portion of the material is now facing out. We're getting really close to finishing your balloon at this point. In the next video, I'll cover how I install Velcro on a Velcro top. I'll cover how we hem the top edge and bottom edge of the balloon, as well as how I add the top webbing and bottom webbing with D-rings so you can attach your suspension cables. We're almost there and we're getting close, so great job. As a closing bonus to this video, I'm going to post some of the first inflation videos of the balloon we were sewing in this video, which is called Aurora. So please enjoy this, and we'll see you in the next video.